going to be installing a GFCI in this kitchen and both these outlets are on the same circuit. To get GFCI protection for both outlets, I need to find the first electrical box in this circuit. So I turned off the power, I removed this outlet, and now I turn the power back on. I have power in this electrical box and no power in this box. So this is the first electrical box in this circuit. Turn off the power to any circuit you're working on and double check it with an electrical tester. A shock under the right conditions can be deadly. The GFCI is going to have one side that's marked line and one side that's marked load. The load side will generally have a piece of tape over it. If you have two hot wires and two neutral wires, you'll be using the line side and the load side. To figure out which wires go to the line side and which go to the load side, you're going to turn the power back on and use an electrical tester. This hot wire is live. This hot wire that's live, along with the corresponding neutral wire, will go to the line side. The hot wire that has no power and the corresponding neutral will go to the load side. Turn your power back off and double check it with an electrical tester. Make sure you match your GFCI to the breaker. In this case, we have a 15 amp breaker and I'm going to be installing a 15 amp GFCI. You'll either wrap your wire around the screw terminal or in this case, we have a plate that pushes forward. We're going to slide the wire behind the plate and tighten down the screw for a very good connection. On the side of the GFCI, there's a wire stripping guide to show you how long they want the wire stripped so it fits underneath that metal plate. I'm going to connect the hot wire that was live to the line side and I'm going to put it underneath the brass screw that's the side with the narrow slot. My neutral wire will go under the silver screw the side with the wide slot. I'm removing the tape on the load side and I'll put the hot wire under the brass screw, the white wire under the silver screw. If you have a ground wire, connect it to the green grounding screw. Because we're in the Chicagoland area, we have metal boxes connected to metal conduit and this is grounded all the way back to the service panel. When I screw in the GFCI to this metal box, it will ground the GFCI. To confirm that this metal box is grounded, I'm using a multimeter. I'm touching the hot wire and I'm touching the metal box and you can see it showing 118 volts. So the metal box is grounded. I turned the power back off and now I'm going to screw the GFCI into the metal box. Turn your power back on and then press the reset button. And now you can test your GFCI and make sure you have power to the next outlet. I'm going to test the GFCI with an outlet tester. And when you get both of the orange lights, this confirms that it's wired properly and it's grounded. 